Have you ever heard a pilot mention a stall and wonder what that means? I'm not talking about a stall where your engine gives out because you forgot to put the clutch in or maybe took it out too soon. I'm referring to an aerodynamic stall. So what is an aerodynamic stall? Well, let's go find out, come on. My name is Gavin Rice. I'm a flight instructor and outdoor enthusiast. Ride along as I share my passion and what I've learned in aviation. you got to do before doing any kind of maneuver. Before we go fly, let's hit the drawing board. In order to understand how an aerodynamic stall works, we first need to break down the fundamentals of an airfoil and its relationship to the wind. Here I have drawn a basic cross-section of the wing of an airplane. There are a couple important components to this cross-section. The specific shape, also known as its camber, makes this wing into what's called an airfoil. An airfoil is designed to create a specific flow of air about the wing, and every airplane has a different design. If we start from the midpoint of the leading edge of the wing and draw a straight line to the trailing edge of the wing, this is what's called the cord line. The cord line is one of two components that help us determine the angle of attack. The other item is the relative wind. Relative wind is just simply the wind that opposes our direction of flight. When we compare the angle between the relative wind and the cord line, this is referred to as our angle of attack. The higher the angle of attack, the more lift we can get, but only up to a certain point. Let's use a graph to represent this. Lift increases when increasing the angle of attack, but it won't go on forever it has a limit. This limit is referred to as the critical angle of attack, which is the point where if exceeded, the airfoil will no longer create effective lift. Going back to the airfoil, what's happening is that as the angle of attack increases, the air on the upper surface of the wing begins to detach. Smooth airflow is no longer occurring and eventually with enough detached air, the wing can no longer produce effective lift. Enough of the drawing board, let's see what this looks like in the air. So the key before we start any maneuver here is we do some clearing turns. So we check out, make sure no one's uh, kind of around our airspace. So first I do a turn to the left here. I'm actually looking out to the right because I'm lifting my right wing, making sure no one's out there. I typically make it about a 90 degree turn to the left here, looking outside, looking at the airspace, making sure no one's out there because this is my airspace. I'm going to own it and I want to make sure no one's in it. All right, so now I make a turn back to the right and now I'm clearing the left side there, making sure no one is out there. So clearing turns, radio calls are the two things you gotta do before doing any kind of maneuver so that you let people know where you are and what you're doing. Distant traffic, Sky 428 Whisker Elmio is currently about four miles east of Lake Distant, 4,000 slow flight westbound. All right, so the first thing we're gonna show is slow flight. Now what is slow flight? Well, slow flight is defined as anything that's less than cruise, all right? So what we're trying to emulate is showing that the aircraft can still function properly at a lower airspeed. So I'm gonna Help the plane slow down by adding some flaps. Those flaps give us some more drag and a little bit of lift, but what I'm really looking for is that extra drag. Maintaining my altitude here, slowing the aircraft down. We're now below 65 knots, going through 60 knots. What I'm listening for is that stall warning horn. You might be able to hear it on this video, but hopefully. And there it is at 46. 
So I'm going to try and go about two knots above that stall warning horn. So if it's 46, I'm going to go for about 48 knots and maintain slow flight. So right now, we are at a very high angle of attack. And like we discussed with that angle of attack, our relative wind in reference to our cord line is a pretty big angle. So we're approaching that critical angle, right? Where if we exceed that, we are gonna stall. So right now we're just kind of on the threshold. And you might be able to tell by the, the video quality right now, it's probably getting a little shaky. Because right now with our flaps deployed, the uh, aircraft has a lot of uh, turbulence going on because there's a lot of drag and it's getting really shaky. There's not a lot of consistent airflow going over these wings. So right now we're looking pretty, pretty shaky. If I try and slow it down some more, while maintaining my altitude, what that's gonna do is increase that angle of attack because I have less and less airflow going over and my angle is increasing in relativity to that relative wind because I'm staying at altitude. So you can hear that stall warning starting to chirp and we'll keep that slowing down, keep that slowing down until we enter towards the stall. There's a deep stall warning horn and I'm really starting to feel those controls get kind of mushy on me. It's pretty hard to control this. And I keep that going. And there's an even higher pitch of the stall warning horn. We're really close to that critical angle of attack. In fact, I'm having trouble maintaining altitude now. Keep that back pressure coming back. And it's still very hard to control. We're almost about to stall. Almost about to stall. Uh, we're almost there. Almost there. And you can feel that buffet there. So what I'm gonna do is pitch that nose down. Look for half sky, half ground, full power. Make sure I correct and then kind of climb back out. You can kind of see the, the, the stall warning horn, it gets louder and louder, it has different uh, pitches, if you will, until you exceed that critical angle of attack. And remember, when you exceed the critical angle of attack and you stall, you're not losing lift entirely. Because if you lost lift entirely, you'd be a rock in the sky, but as you notice, we're still flying, right? What we did is we lost the effective lift. And that's what a lot of people get confused, is that a stall is a loss of effective lift, but you still get some lift. Well, that pretty much concludes today's video on the critical angle attack and aerodynamic stalls. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll see you on the next one.